Welcome back to the Mining Pod. It's just me rocking the mic by myself this week. Matt Kimmel is away, and last week I was off in Jackson Hole doing some podcasts in person. We will have those coming out shortly, including one with Fred Teal of Marathon Digital, Zach Bradford of Clean Spark, and Dan Lawrence of Foreman Mining. Those were three great conversations, audio only, but you can catch them on both our YouTube channel and on our podcast feed. We will be releasing those shortly. As per today, we actually have a lot more stories than normal. We have seven stories. Uh, so we'll go through them very quickly and just talk about the headlines for the most part. And I'll give a little commentary on each of them as I see it from a mining angle. Uh, so we'll start off with the collapse of Silver, Silicon Valley Bank or SVB and Silvergate. Uh, this is actually happening this morning, Friday, when I'm recording it. SVB is a prominent bank within the Silicon Valley circles that a lot of founders use in order to bank their companies. Uh, earlier this week, the Teal Fellowship Fund decided or sent a notice saying, hey, you should probably pull your funds from the bank. Pretty quickly after that, we saw a run on the bank and its stock price plunge as much as 60%. As of this morning, the FDIC has put out a notice that they've actually taken control of SVB and are going to start giving out funds to customers of the bank uh, based on their line in the credit there. We'll see what happens with this. This, of course, happens after Silvergate voluntarily decided to shut down their bank. They were caught in the collapse of FTX, and then they also had a lot of their other banking partners, including Coinbase and Gemini, decide to withdraw from the bank. What we are really seeing here is that the Federal Reserve is continuing to increase the cost of capital, and some of these banks are on the wrong side of that bet. People want their deposits out, but those deposits may be out for a loan right now, and then they have a mismatch of liabilities. It's a pretty complex topic and we won't get into it too much because banking is not something that we uh, put ourselves out there as experts on. If you want to follow this story, definitely hit up Austin Campbell on Twitter. He is a great reference for this whole conversation. Okay, from the banking side of things, let's move over to the Biden administration, which put out its 2023 proposed budget, which still has to go through both the Senate and the House before it being issued. The big thing here for Bitcoin miners is a 30% proposed tax on Bitcoin mining and other cryptocurrency mining. It would be implemented over a three-year term with a 10% increase every year. The rationale being for this, quote, increase in energy consumption attributable to the growth of digital asset mining has negative environmental effects and can have environmental justice implications as well as increased energy prices for those that share an electricity grid with digital asset miners. The way that I see the story, honestly, is just a culmination of many headlines that we've seen over the last few years about Bitcoin miners increasing the cost of energy to the grid, Bitcoin miners polluting the environment, or Bitcoin miners being noisy. Politicians do listen to these things. Uh, matter of fact, they, they do care about those things at some point, and I think you're going to see that bubble up. I also see this being a little bit more of a democratic or leftist lean into the environmental justice side of things. Bitcoin miners do use a lot of energy. That's part of the business. And so there's going to be some shots at Bitcoin miners. I don't think this is surprising. That being said, I don't think this has a, a hair's chance in hell of passing just based on the conversations that I've had with people in the space. That being said, most public companies in the space, Bitcoin mining companies are public. Their executives are worried about this the most, right? These big companies have a lot of capital out there and they actually have huge administrative costs because they're often hiring lobbyists and lawyers at this point. Uh, and they're worried about politicians coming after the business lines and politicizing the use of their energy. So definitely something to watch. Uh, this was, of course, greeted with a lot of fury on Twitter.com, as is most things that come from Washington, D.C. Okay, let's move over to Jack Dorsey Land and talk about Block Inc. Block put out a blog post this week talking about a mining development kit that is soon to implement. They first talked about it a few years ago and hasn't seemingly gone anywhere yet because they were hiring a lot of talent in order to build this. They put out a call to the industry, which you can find in the link right below in the description here, asking for feedback on what they should build. Some of the ideas they already have is a hashboard that can integrate with Raspberry Pis, better firmware, better stockware options, stuff like that. This is a pretty cool idea. I think a lot of people would be pretty happy with it. There is a lot of different uh, mining firmware, a lot of different mining hashboards coming to market right now that people besides the big three manufacturers uh, Kanan, Bitmain, MicroBT are building. So we look forward to more competition within the ASIC space. And we will talk about that a little bit later in today's show. 
uh, based on the Epic blockchain news and the blog post I recently published about Bitmain's A6 and S19XP. Okay, let's go international for a moment. Let's go down to Paraguay. Talk about Power, P-O-W dot R-E, a Canadian Bitcoin mining company that landed a 100 megawatt contract on the Itaipu Dam. The Itaipu Dam is the third largest hydro dam in the world and the 45th largest reservoir in the world. It's a huge basin of power in South America. A lot of Bitcoin miners have been looking at this and saying, hey, maybe we could throw some Bitcoin mines on top of that and tap that green energy power, which recently closed a Series A funding round for about $9.2 million. And then some further funding from other people for about a similar amount of cash uh, is funneling that cash into this project. 100 megawatts, of course, is not huge when you think of the things in Texas, but it's sizable and it's noticeable that they got this uh, through the regulators in Paraguay. Working internationally is very difficult. So congrats to them. We look forward to seeing more developments on that front. Okay, moving back up to the United States, we have more intrigue in upstate New York with uh, U.S. Bitcoin operating in Niagara Falls. According to a document from the Niagara Gazette, a U.S. court, a state Supreme Court that is, signed a final order that directs U.S. data centers group, U.S. Bitcoin, to shut down its cryptocurrency mining facility on Buffalo Avenue and pay the city of Niagara Falls fines exceeding $1 million. This in, in a larger sense, in a macro perspective, it is just like a back and forth with the city of Niagara, uh, where a lot of Bitcoin miners have been trying to operate in the region. Niagara Falls has a lot of cheap hydro energy. Upstate New York has historically been a large place for Bitcoin mining. And uh, Bitcoin miners have been sort of caught in the middle of this. This story, in a larger sense, is just the continuation of Bitcoin miners seeking cheap energy in upstate New York and more leftist leaning folk who uh, are on the environmental justice side of things and they don't want Bitcoin miners in their state, even if they are using cheap green hydro energy. Uh, Niagara Falls has been sort of swatting at a lot of these Bitcoin miners who have been in the region. So it's not surprising to see continued frustrations there, including fines and orders to shut down. Vice did a recent piece on this. Uh, you can look up on Bitcoin mining in, the, in that specific area, which is also fantastic. Let's turn lastly to Bitcoin mining ASICs. Let's talk about Epic putting out a new Bitcoin miner or announcement for a new Bitcoin miner. And then lastly, talk about this blog post I wrote about S19XPs. According to Epic, Blockchain released a press release earlier this week. Their North American designed Bitcoin mining rigs based on the Intel block scale technology are soon to come out in April. This is the Block Miner TM. The block miners should be competitive against most other manufacturers, such as Bitmain and MicroPT. And they have one model, the 520i, designed for immersion, and the 740a, designed for high performance. We look forward to seeing what these are like. There's not a ton of information out there, out there right now about Epic. Uh, they've been pretty quiet, but the big facts that we do know about them is that they are working with Intel directly, including the hash boards and the control boards. Uh, they know these things inside and out. Again, this is just sort of a, like a large perspective thing. We welcome more competition to the ASIC space. We want more competition. We want less monopolies when building these machines. It's a sign of a maturing industry. There's more talent flooding into it. Okay, last topic for today. And it's only going to be a quick one as I want to uh, push people to read this article if they're interested in it as opposed to just to talk about it. I wrote an article alongside the Compass Mining Operations team about Bitmain ASICs. Uh, and the design changes recently to their hashboard specifically that are frustrating and could be more frustrating this summer in our perspective. This is more of an opinion piece based on data that we've collected internally. It's titled Bitmain Changes ASIC Design. Miners need to be ready. The TLDR on this is that uh, around Q4 2022, we noticed and confirmed with Bitmain that they started changing some of their hashboard designs, move away from this laminated material to this laminate with an aluminum board. And they also took away the pick. A pick is a piece uh, on the hash board that allows the control board to speak more easily with the individual hash board. We believe that both these things could be net negatives for Bitcoin miners who are running smaller to medium sized operations because uh, the machines might overheat more because the aluminum are harder to repair and the lack of a pick means you have to install firmware more than likely in order to speak to each board individually. Uh, this might not be an issue for bigger miners who can just swap in and out machines very easily, but for smaller miners who are looking to ROI on limited capital, we think this could increase friction 
Of course, uh, we're, we're looking for feedback on this. So if you do have feedback on this article, do feel free to email me. We are also likely to do a longer podcast about this topic next week, perhaps at Twitter Spaces. Okay, that's it for this week on the Mining Pod News Roundup. Thank you again for listening. Give us a like on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, or also uh, subscribe to us on our podcast feed and give us a five stars. It helps other Bitcoin miners out there find this conversation. If you liked what you heard today, do give me an email and give me some feedback. If you didn't like what you heard today, give me an email. It could be feedback. It helps the show improve. From all of us at Compass and the Mining Pod, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you again next week.